Before we dive into today's story, we're excited to share some fantastic news with you. After years of research, writing and countless hours of work behind the scenes, our first official Railways Explained ebook is finally available for purchase. This book brings together 100 carefully crafted stories from our videos, spread across more than 600 pages, offering a unique and structured journey through the fascinating world of railways. We are truly proud of this milestone and believe it will be a valuable resource for rail professionals, enthusiasts, students, and anyone curious about how railways work. The book is now available at an accessible price, making it possible for anyone who wants to own their own edition of Railways Explained. The link to purchase the book is available in the description. And now, back to the topic of today's video. Railways Explained has covered various aspects of French railways on several occasions, from comprehensive videos on the high-speed network's development, to the evolution of TGV trains and recent innovations such as the next-generation TGV-M. Today we will address a topic that should have been our starting point years ago. An overview of the entire French railway system, which is truly remarkable. Serving a nation of 68 million inhabitants, the network operates almost 13,000 trains daily, transporting approximately 5 million passengers each day. As in previous videos, we will later delve into a deep dive into performance figures, so stay tuned. For now, let us explore how and where it all began. The first railway line in France opened in 1828 between Saint-Étienne and Andrézieux, southwest of Lyon. Initially, the line transported coal from the Saint-Étienne mines to the Loire River via horse-drawn wagons. The inaugural passenger railway line and the first to serve Paris was the Paris Saint-Germain line, inaugurated in 1837. Early trunk routes such as Paris-Rouen and Paris-Orléans relied heavily on English technology and expertise, leaving a lasting influence on France's railway practices, including its standard gauge and left-hand running on double-track lines, exceptions being Alsace-Lorraine and the Paris Metro, which adopted right-hand operation. To maintain control over the railways, the French government enacted the 1842 Railway Law, establishing a framework for the national network. By the 1850s, regional routes consolidated into the big six major networks – Est, Nord, West, Paris-Orléans, Midi and Paris-Lyon-Méditerranée. Following the Franco-Prussian War in 1871, Prussia annexed Alsace-Lorraine, integrating its railways into the German system, hence their right hand running. Upon France's recovery of the territory in 1918, the Alsace-Lorraine network operated independently until nationalization. In 1938, France's five largest private railway companies merged with the state network to form the Société Nationale des Chemins de Fer Français, known as SNCF, employing 515,000 personnel and managing 42,700 kilometers of track. The darkest chapter unfolded during World War II. By 1945, three quarters of the network lay in ruins and big number of workers lose their life. Post-war recovery prioritized electrification and construction of damaged infrastructure. The 1980s heralded the era of the train à grande vitesse, with a dedicated high-speed network constructed at a scale unseen since the 19th century railway manias. If you want to find out more, check our earlier videos, we will put links in the description. Also, we need to point out the French decentralization policy that reshaped regional rail service. Namely, in 1987, the Transport Express Regional or TER service was launched, empowering regions to oversee local rail operations through partnerships with SNCF. This shift granted regions autonomy as transport authorities. Regarding the organizational structure of the French railway system, prior to 1997, SNCF operated as a vertically integrated entity, managing both rail infrastructure and train operations. 
In 1997, under EU regulations mandating the separation of infrastructure management and operational services, SNCF underwent restructuring. Ownership of the rail network was transferred to Réseau Ferré de France as a dedicated infrastructure manager. RFF contracted SNCF for infrastructure maintenance and operations, while SNCF retained control of train services. A subsequent reform in 2015 merged RFF and SNCF into the SNCF Group, consolidating infrastructure management under SNCF Réseau. Concurrently, SNCF Mobilities became the operational arm for passenger and freight services, including station management. A new reform in 2020 further refined the SNCF Group's structure, establishing a parent company, SNCF SA, overseeing six subsidiaries. SNCF Réseau remains central to infrastructure management, while SNCF Carrés and Connections manages over 3,000 railway stations across France. SNCF Voyageurs provides passenger transport operating services such as TGV Intercités, including TGV Inouï and TGV Ouigo, Transilian commuter trains and TER regional services. Additionally, SNCF Voyageurs is the majority shareholder in TGV Lyria, linking France and Switzerland, and the Eurostar Group, which operates high-speed services between continental Europe and the UK, as well as France, Belgium, the Netherlands and Germany. The SNCF Group also includes GODIS, a global logistics leader addressing supply chain challenges through freight forwarding and logistics. There are also Keolis that is specialized in shared urban mobility, operating light rail, buses and autonomous shuttles across 13 countries, while managing France's second largest car park network. Freight and logistics are managed by Rail Logistics Europe, which comprises six divisions with complementary expertise. Hexafret is rail wagon groupage organizer, while Captrain is pan-European rail freight operator. Rail Logistics Europe includes Forwardis, Naviland Cargo and Technis. Now we need to put here one disclaimer. Namely, in the pictures and charts during the video you will see SNCF Fret, the historic freight division that dominated French rail cargo market for decades. But this company was restructured and as of 2025 it no longer exists. SNCF Fret functions were redistributed, Conventional single wagon freight operations transitioned to Hexa Fret, while locomotive maintenance was assigned to Technis. The liberalization of the French railway sector, initiated over a decade ago under EU market deregulation mandates, continues to transform an industry historically dominated by SNCF. This reform spans three segments high speed and long distance services, Trans d'Equilibre du Territoire which are state-subsidized short- and medium-distance routes, and regional commuter networks including Transilien within the Paris metropolitan area and TER regional express trains. Regulatory frameworks distinguish between freely organized services and those under public service obligations. Taking this into account, starting in December 2023, French authorities must issue invitations to tender for the operation of railway lines within a 10-year period, with provisional schedules established through agreements with SNCF voyageurs extending up to 2033. For example, under the Train d'Equilibre du Territoire segment, following competitive tenders, SNCF voyageurs retained operations of the Nantes-Lyon and Nantes-Bordeaux lines, securing a 10-year contract starting in 2027. At the regional level, eight French regions have begun opening their TER services to competitive tendering, including Provence-Alpes-Côte d'Azur, Hauts-de-France, Grand Est, Pays de la Loire, Burgundy-Franche-Comté, Normandie, Auvergne-Rhône-Alpes, and Nouvelle-Aquitaine. SNCF Voyageurs has responded by establishing dedicated entities such as SNCF Voyageurs Loire Océan, Sud Azur, and Etoile Hauts de France, 
For instance, SNCF Voyageur Sud Azur, servicing the French Riviera and surrounding areas, plans to enhance train frequency on the Cannes Nice Menton route by 75%. In addition to these entities, private operator Transdev Rail sued Intermetropole secured the Marseille Toulon Nice corridor in November 2021, with operations commencing in June 2025, while the train plans to launch independent services by 2027. High speed lines, excluding those subject to territorial agreements, have been open to freely organized competition since December 2020. For high-speed services, any operator may now offer service throughout France, particularly along profitable corridors such as Paris-Lyon, Paris-Lille, Lyon-Marseille and Paris-Bordeaux. This new competitive environment has enabled operators like Trenitalia to run Freccia Rossa trains on the Paris-Lyon route since autumn 2021 and Renfe to operate along the Paris-Marseille corridor starting in 2024. Concurrently, SNCF has expanded internationally, launching Wigo España in 2021, a low-cost high-speed service connecting Madrid, Barcelona, Valencia and Alicante. SNCF Group has further extended its reach through subsidiaries like Keolis, which provides rail services in the UK. The transformative pressures of liberalization have not only compelled SNCF to overhaul its commercial strategy, but have also fundamentally reshaped the competitive dynamics of France's railway sector. With this in mind, we believe it is now time to delve into some figures. The French railway network spans 27,586 km of lines, of which 5,430 km are high-speed lines. Electrification levels are exceptionally high at 71% of the network, with 26% operating under a 1.5 kV DC system and 45% utilizing 25 kV AC system. Only 4% of lines are equipped with the European Rail Traffic Management System. In 2023, total rail traffic reached 450 million train kilometers, marking a decline of over 3% compared to both 2022 and pre-pandemic 2019 levels. This downturn was primarily attributed to widespread social unrest, including 35 days of national strikes in the first half of 2023. Rail passenger transport reached 386 million train kilometers, achieving an average train occupancy rate of 51%. The largest share of this, approximately 53%, was realized by tier trains within their dedicated regional networks, while TGV trains accounted for around 31%. Rail passenger transport performance peaked in 2023, surged to a record 107 billion passenger kilometers, marking a 5% increase from 2022 and exceeding pre-pandemic levels for the second consecutive year. In contrast to train kilometers, TGV services dominated passenger kilometer performance with 64 billion achieved. Regarding operational performance measured by the proportion of trains arriving at their destination with less than 5 minutes of delay, what surprised us is the significant unreliability of TGV trains, which had a punctuality rate of 75.8%. We ask TGV passengers watching this video to assist us in verifying the accuracy of these figures based on their on-the-ground experiences. Also on the screen, you can see the distribution of tier train punctuality per region. In 2023, as in 2022, rail activity in France remained largely dominated by the various brands and subsidiaries of SNCF Voyageurs high-speed services. Collectively, TGV in We and WeGo accounted for nearly 85% of the market share, followed by SNCF Group subsidiaries Eurostar and Lyria, the SNCF Deutsche Bahn partnership, while Trenitalia France and Renfe Viajeros each represented less than 1%. Since October 2023, Eurostar has absorbed the Thales brand into its network now serving France, the United Kingdom, Belgium, the Netherlands and Germany. 
By the end of 2024, direct non-PSO competition was limited to the Paris-Lyon line, operated by both Trenitalia France and SNCF Voyageurs. The extension of this direct rail service to Italy by both operators have been suspended until the end of March 2025 due to the Morian landslide in August 2023 with SNCF Voyageurs offering a replacement bus connection in the meantime. We need to highlight that this competition induced growth of passenger numbers on the Paris-Lyon route in 2023 that was nearly 10% higher than in 2019, while average fares remain approximately 10% below pre-competition levels. Renfe Viajeros operates two international routes, Lyon-Barcelona and Marseille-Madrid, without direct competition from the SNCF, which serves the Paris-Barcelona corridor. The Spanish operator has announced plans to launch new cross-border lines to Toulouse in 2025, alongside the introduction of higher-capacity high-speed trains with 500 seats. The Paris-Berlin route has also been inaugurated with overnight services operated by Austrian carrier OBB Nightjet since December 2023, complementing the Paris-Vienna night train running since late 2021 and a daytime service launched in December 2024 by the DBSNCF Voyageurs Partnership. Trenitalia France plans to expand its Paris-Lyon-Marseille services to four daily trains and strengthen its Paris-Milan operations. Domestic high-speed operators are also entering the race. Lotran and Proxima aim to operate in western France, while Kevin Speed targets a high-frequency service of 16 daily trains from Paris to Lille, Strasbourg and Lyon. International operators are Riva, Evelyn, Virgin Trains and Europe plan to operate on services between Paris, London and Brussels and night train offer for the company European Sleeper. As illustrated, rail passenger transport's modal share in France has stabilized at approximately 10%, contrasting with neighboring countries where shares have declined relative to previous years. In 2023, French rail freight transport recorded 52.3 million train kilometers and 29.4 billion net ton kilometers, reflecting a 17% decline compared to 2022. This sharp reduction resulted from multiple concurrent challenges, including social unrest over pension reforms, the Morian Valley landslide, rising energy costs, and broader economic stagnation. SNCF Fret remained the dominant freight operator with a 48% market share in 2023, though this figure has been on a steady downward trajectory in recent years. The ongoing restructuring of SNCF's freight division will play a key role in shaping future market distribution. By the end of 2023, freight operations involved 21 railway companies, including five entities under SNCF's Rail Logistics Europe division, five subsidiaries of major European operators and independent operators. Rail Freight's modal share in France stood at 9% in 2023, below the European average and the levels of most neighboring countries. With this overview, we have covered essential facts and figures to help you better understand French complex railway system, which currently employs over 150,000 people. We hope you found this exploration insightful. If you enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing to our channel and enabling notifications to stay updated. Your support is invaluable, whether through PayPal donations, Patreon membership or YouTube channel membership, where you can access exclusive perks and behind-the-scenes content. See you soon in the next video!